So I've been seeing these photos for years. Every few months they pop up on Reddit, on Facebook, in forums. Old F1 cars, McLarens, Benettons, Jordans, supposedly about to be crushed in a scrapyard or found decaying, apparently forgotten about. It's a captivating story and a believable one too. F1 teams are obviously really protective over their designs, not wanting any of the other teams to see or steal a car's secrets. But are these stories true? Are there really Formula 1 cars dotted around the world waiting to be crushed? Well, I wanted to find out. So I dug in. This photo has been circulating on Reddit and car forums for years. The claim is that McLaren sent a real MP414, the car that Mick Hakkinen won the 1999 World Championship in, to an auto recycling centre in Germany. And there's a quote floating around from that centre saying that they couldn't keep anything intact. But I wanted to look at these photos properly because everyone just says they crushed an F1 car. But is that really true? So let's start with this cockpit shot. To be honest, the carbon looks right. The steering wheel also looks right. You've got a switch panel on the left with the ignition, the brake bias knob at the bottom. That's all about correct for this era. The only thing is that the C is off. It looks a little bit simple. Cars from 1999 had custom-made carbon fibre seats, and this, well, I can't quite tell what material it is. But let's give it the benefit of the doubt. So all the details in the cockpit point to it being a real car. Even the little screen above the cockpit, that's a deflector to push the air over the driver's head. That's a real detail. So, so far, so good. Now let's take a look at the rear of the car. And the first thing is the tyres. They look like show tyres. You can tell because they don't have the depth of thread that real slicks had from this era. And they're pretty shiny. Now, it's impossible to tell for sure, but I've seen a fair few of these, and I think that that's the case here. But anyway, having show tyres doesn't mean the rest of the car isn't real. Teams swap tyres all the time for display. And here, the diffuser looks real. The rear wing also looks real. You can just about see the adjustment holes for changing the wing angle. And there's even heat shielding on the wishbones and diffuser. These silver patches here. To be honest, I doubt they'd bother heat shielding on a fake car. That's something you only need if hot exhaust gases are actually hitting the wishbones. So I'm thinking maybe it's legit. Then looking underneath the car, the floor looks real. You can see the plank, which you probably wouldn't put on if it was a show car. You can see the drive shafts and you can see the brake ducts, which on show cars would usually be massively simplified, but these look proper. And even on this shot here, look at the wing mirror. There's a little hole for adjusting the mirror angle. That's detail that you wouldn't find if this car was just for show. And on the side of the tub, there's this little dent, which is actually the same as the real racing car. But then we get to the crushing photos and this is where it falls apart literally it looks like the grab arm comes down and takes the top off the airbox in one big block now that's probably consistent with carbon and if it was fiberglass it would have probably crumpled from the top down because it isn't that strong so that pretty much tracks but then look at this the side pods the engine cover that's not carbon that's fiberglass you can see the white showing through where it's broken fiberglass breaks white carbon doesn't do that so the bodywork the side pods the engine cover they're definitely fiberglass and they're definitely not from a real racing car so let's move on to the next picture the back of the car it's a bit of a mess but you can see the rear crash structure here's the diff casing you can see the holes where the drive shafts go in that looks genuine likely because it's too complicated to recreate now often show cars will have the original tub then have fabricated frames where the engine should be and then use the original gearbox and diff casing because it's just too hard to make and that is where all of the wishbones and suspension bolt onto. The rest of the car will then typically be made of a mix of original, remade and simplified parts. For example, on this car, the wishbones, they've got titanium ends going into carbon so they look like the real deal. So I thought this car was just a typical show car. But it was much worse than I thought. When you look at this picture, you can see the steering rack. And it's not a real one. It's probably taken from a road car. But more importantly, look at what it's attached to. The steering rack of an F1 car from this time is bolted onto the front of the tub. And in this picture, you can see the tub. You can see where the West sticker is on the front of it. But it's made from fiberglass. And I must have got caught out earlier because the inside does look like it's made from carbon. So, what they sent to the Crusher was just a show car. A Frankenstein F1 car with a fake tub, 
fake bodywork and probably made up from random bits from the parts bin from the previous years. And the Reddit post said that the facility said that they weren't allowed to leave anything intact. But I think that's probably nonsense. So if that McLaren wasn't a real racing car, what happens to real cars when they finally finish racing? Do they actually get crushed by the teams? Before we find out, I need to tell you about today's sponsor. Now, I do a fair bit of traveling with this channel and I often work on public Wi-Fi in hotels, airports, cafes, exactly where personal data is most vulnerable. And that's why I use Surfshark VPN. It encrypts everything I'm doing online, emails, messages, logins. So even on unsecure networks, I know my data stays private. I don't have to worry about tracking or dodgy networks. For example, one time I was working on a video from a hotel abroad and couldn't access a bunch of sites I normally use. I switched on Surfshark, changed my location, and it all worked just like I was back at home. And the best bit is that you can use Surfshark on unlimited devices. Your phone, laptop, and tablet are all protected under one plan. They even offer Surfshark Alert, which monitors your account for data breaches and notifies you if the info's ever been compromised. Try it risk-free at surfshark.com forward slash driver61 or use code driver61 and you'll get four months free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, do these cars actually get crushed? Well, the answer is, not really. Teams build six, maybe eight monocoques a year, and for the most part, they survive. They typically become show cars, often resprayed in the current year's colours. Or they get sold to customers, given to team principals, or given to drivers. And the big teams now keep pretty much everything. Ferrari had their Clienti program, and we've made videos about them before, where they store all the cars at Maranello. And if you're lucky enough to own one, you just show up, jump in, and they handle everything else. And some of the other teams also have programs like this. But back in the V10 and V8 era, you could actually buy these cars independently. I know people who in the mid 2000s bought F1 cars, rolling chassis from independent teams. So that's the turb, wings, wheels, wishbones, everything basically apart from the engine for less than a hundred grand, which is still a lot of money, but kind of crazy when you think about how much they cost to make. But since 2014, since the hybrid era, cars are almost impossible for private owners to run. The software, the electrical systems, you need factory support just to start the engine. So unless you've got a direct line to Marinello or Brackley, you're probably not going to be running one of these cars. Now, what does get destroyed are the parts. First, every safety critical component, suspension, steering and anything structural has a mileage limit. Once it hits that limit, it either gets tested and if it passes, it goes back on the car and if it doesn't, it gets destroyed. And with the aero parts, they call it confidential waste. Wings, floors, barge boards, they all get shredded to protect the car's secrets. And even the tyres. Pirelli collects every single tyre every single race weekend, ships them back to the UK and destroys them. So the chassis and some parts survive, but everything else gets destroyed. But there's one exception. When a team goes bankrupt. While I was researching this whole thing, I found a guy who bought a Caterham F1 car when the team went bust in 2014. And the research said that the chassis was selling for just three to 10 grand. So obviously I gave him a call. His name is Kevin. He's an electrician and he had no engineering experience. And in 2015, he bought a genuine Formula One monocoque for less than five grand because he wanted to do something cool. It was Marcus Ericsson's 2014 Catrum, the one that crashed in Hungary. And when Catron collapsed, this thing was just sitting in the side of the workshop written off. And it had been thrown to one side in the factory, out in an outbuilding. What do we do with this? It's too expensive to repair. It was listed in the auction as suitable for a simulator. And when it went to auction, Kevin spent two and a half hours outbidding somebody online. It was less than £5,000, which to me was a, a punt to go, well, let's give it a go. But here's the thing, he didn't just get a tub and stick it in his garage. He wanted to make it run, but it didn't have an engine. So he went to Renault to try and get hold of an old power unit. They needed a €2 million Euro deposit, and then I could rent it for three months. And then at that point, I'd have to pay them to rebuild it, to put it back in their spares. I think they were trying to put me off, Scott, I'll be honest. And that's probably fair enough. These are hybrid era cars. You can't just bolt a new engine and go. Although, as Kevin has proved, you actually can. 
Kevin found a Formula Renault two litre engine that would fit under the engine cover. Because the engine is smaller than the original, he had to extend the gearbox by about 25 centimetres. And he also managed to buy about half the car's CAD files from the auction house, but a lot of them were also missing. And so he had to figure out the rest himself. It's all logical. You know, the car is not F1 standards. You know, Norris had blabbed me 25 times by the time I got round once. But it's a logical approach of rebuilding a car. It's just harder. There are no parts. You know, if you want a part, you've got to work out how to make it. Ten years later, the car runs. Just last year, he drove it on an old airfield in Suffolk. An electrician with no racing background rebuilt an F1 car in his garage. Absolutely amazing. But how much did it cost? I'm probably up to Porsche Carrera turbo money, I would think now. But it's probably a little bit better than owning a Porsche Carrera turbo. So are F1 cars really being crushed in scrapyards around the world? The honest answer is not really. Most of the real chassis survive and get used. But every now and then a team might collapse and things slip through the cracks. And that's how an electrician ends up with the real F1 car in his shed. Now, I mentioned Corsa Cliente earlier in this video and I got incredible access there this year. So to see what they do with their retired cars, click here to watch that video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.